Going down to my collection. Alright. So, this is my video game collection. If we go over here, there's more consoles. If we look under there, we got one more console. Uh, probably a contender for like the world, you know, something that's bigger than the Xbox One. Let's start off with my oldest piece in my collection, the Atari 2600. So, the heart, so, this obviously isn't one of the uh, first Atari's made, because if so, the thing would be, would weigh a fuck, would weigh about, weighed as, weigh as many as a, uh, weigh as much as, as a McDonald's convent, a, con, a, a McDonald's fan convention, because of the RF shielding, it would have said something about being made in Sunnyvale, California, but it's made in Taiwan, so, yeah, but the hardware itself is, dates from 1977, has like, a, like, several bytes of RAM, which, you know, bit of... It's aged, but it's good. And then we go over to Big Bertha over here. Jesus, this is a big thing. The flippin' bar came off. So, just let me... The adhesive, like, stopped working on the... So, this big beauty is the 5200. And God, is it huge. I mean... I'll... Be it, it's not he it's not huge in the sense of like an Xbox One where it just looks like a VCR. This thing is like just as big though. Just as big. And a good chunk of that space actually is for a place to store your controllers, which I guess is handy, but you know doesn't help. Put that back. Plus, the thing requires two AC adapters to even function. One for the thing that goes into the TV, that plugs into the antenna, and another goes straight into the console. You know, design. And then, skipping over a generation, we have the good old NES. I mean, what else is there to say? It's one of the best-selling consoles of its time. It, it's deeply ingrained in American culture, especially of the mid to late 80s. You know, after, after that big crash, Atari instigated, you know. Well, it wasn't their fault. It was because too many, console, too many consoles were being put out, too many crap games were put out. So, of course, everybody jumped ship thinking it was a fad. Good thing Nintendo was there. But if Nintendo wasn't there, this thing would would have gotten the praise it deserved. And you might have been play, would have played Castlevania Mega Man on this. But, you know. So, the Master System, which is technically superior to the NES, but... It lacks in sound because the NES used, I think, a Ryko 203A or, or 20A3 or something like that. This thing used a PSG chip, which is like an SN7, some bunch of numbers I can't remember at the moment. Even has a nice little diagram of, of where everything's hooked up. Then skipping head because I don't have an Atari 7800 to show you, we have, well, I'm going to start with the NES. The, you know what, I'm going to start with the Genesis because at an earlier release date, 89, 
88 if you're in Japan or somewhere else other than the U.S. and Europe. Um, it was released in Sega Genesis, used a YM2, I can't remember it, used a, it has a Yamaha, Maha FM synthesis chip. It used a Motorola 68K, the same processor used in the Commodore Amiga. So that's why a good chunk of the Sega Sega Genesis's library, especially in Europe, were Amiga ports. That's why you could get Lemmings for this thing and have it be somewhat similar. Similar. Same goes for the Sega CD, since I think a good couple games were from the Amiga. The Sega CD, I think, was released 91, 92. Then this thing, which is my latest purchase, was released in 94 to hold over for the Sega Saturn. But Sega made the mistake of releasing this thing. I mean, if they were going to use this as a transitional thing, they should have released it with... They should have had somebody else make games for it other than in-house at Sega, so that way they could focus on the Saturn. I have no Saturn to cut to. Um, made this cheap, made the games for this even cheaper, and maybe... And maybe just, you know... Made it as a cheaper alternative to the Sega Saturn, you know. But Sega segmented the market too much, too many third-party developers are like, what? Which thing am I developing now? Sega, the Genesis, the Sega CD, the 32X? What am I doing? So, the 32X ultimately failed, much in the same sense as the uh, 5200. Then we cut to the Super Nintendo, which almost had a CD add-on, but that's an entirely different story. Just look up the Nintendo PlayStation, PlayStation being two words. So this thing was probably one of the most powerful consoles, one of the most powerful Nintendo consoles next to the GameCube. The GameCube being so powerful that it was, that it provided the architecture for the Wii and the Wii U. Well, the Wii U being built off of the Wii's architecture, which was built off of the GameCube. I own a GameCube and an N64, but I don't have it at this present location. So I have this to show. So here's the Super Nintendo. It's really powerful. I think the next powerful console you could get after this was the Neo Geo, which for obvious reasons I don't own. Then we've got the Sony PlayStation. Um, it was made after the nasty divorce between Sony and Nintendo made the PlayStation, one word this time, and made this thing. I own the original model, which you can tell by having some of the extra stuff on the back and having the, the CD laser be right over the power supply, meaning if this thing got hot enough, or if you use this long enough, and this thing got hot enough, the, the plastic track in which the laser sits on and moves on would melt, the thing would get all whacked out. Like, you, like what I used to do is put cans of Play-Doh, which I still have, and just put them under the rubber feet of the console just so that way it airs out, but I stopped really doing this because this place I keep them in gets really freaking cold this time of year, and in general, so, yeah. But this thing sold a ton, it's, its successor, the PlayStation 2, pretty much dominated, and I grew up with the PS2 playing such, such of my favorites as... Battle for Bikini Bottom, and its spiritual successor, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game. But they're pretty good collect 3D platformer collectathons, the same you would find 
on the N64 and even the PlayStation early on, you know. So, then if I could freaking find it, the, ah, here it is, the Wii. I mean, I used to have a Wii, this isn't my original Wii that I used to own, but, you know, it's good. And now that I got this, I own every Nintendo console, save for the Switch. Obvious reasons. This is 2016. That's not due f till next year. Probably holiday season of next year. That is, if, that is if Nintendo's actually smart enough to make a profit nowadays. So then we cut to the most recent piece of technology, the Wii U. I bought it because there are some cool games coming out for the Wii U, and I just want to have a new Nintendo console, because I wasn't really interested in the PS3, my dad had a PS3, never was into the Xbox 360, because I think that console's good, is only good for first-person shooters, my opinion, so don't crucify me yet, and yeah, the thing did commercially Poorly commercially because Nintendo made a few missteps, which I would go into greater depth later on, not right now. So, eh. So then, here are all my cartridges. Just move those up. Oh. Master System, 2600, Genesis, hold on, because a good chunk of space isn't really taken up much, that all of them just sort of go around and stuff, just the NES games, get trash, so... Atari 2600 games, and finally, Sega CD games. I don't, I used to have Sewer Shark, but I lost it. Um, you know, wasn't really interested in the, like, I'm not looking for a 100% complete collection. I'm just really just getting all the games that I would like to play, and if I really want to go into full-time collecting, then I get all, like, the FMV games and whatnot. Don't any own any Sega 32X games right now, but I will be getting some shortly. And over here, I have all of my boxed Gen Sega Genesis and Master System games. I got Reggie Jackson Baseball. Even though I'm not into sports games, I got it originally as a joke. Global defense is actually pretty hard since you, you since you control firing see, since you have to instead of it's different from most shmups like R type from which you have an aiming reticule so you aim so you aim and sh so you sh shoot so you shoot right but you have to aim where you're shooting and at the same time you have to move around. So you have to toggle between aiming and moving, which makes global defense, like, very hard. Afterburner over here suffers from the same problems I had with Space Harrier on the Master System, where it's an ambitious game made on relatively inferior hardware compared to its arcade original. So it makes the game a bit harder. However, it's not as hard as Space Harrier because... Space Harrier, everything comes up right in front of you, so you have little to no reaction time to whatever's going on in the level. That's it. Then we cut ahead to my two only boxed things, the PlayStation and the Sega CD. The Sega CD... Both of these things my aunt found in her attic, just laying around. People have told me to throw out one of the... To people have told me to sell the Sega, the extra Sega CD, which I'm only keeping for the box, really. 
So I'm keeping it there also in case the Sega CD fails again. Like I, me and some other guy had to go in and replace the fuse. So I did that. So it's nice to have a spare Sega CD, especially since I don't own a thing that increases the storage space on it, you know, because you can't save directly on discs, duh. This box is empty because that PlayStation is over there. And here is a homebrew game I got at PAX East last, well, earlier this year, in April. Uh, good game. Talked with the guys that developed. I even asked if they were going to do any other ports, like if they make a Halloween 89, are they going to port it for the Genesis? If they do a Halloween 87 or 88, are they going to make one for the Turbo Graphics? Like, you know. What are they going to do? And over here, my odd one of the bunch is a single, lonely ColecoVision game. It's meaning to get a ColecoVision, but instead I got a 32X. Yeah. Some more of my boxed games, some boxes that I get from this. Most of the, my old games I get from this one guy, Luke, Lukey Games. L-U-K-I-E -E games. Then I got my Game Boy, Game Boy Advance collection, which I got, mostly I got at a yard sale, Game, the Game Boy Color and Game Boy games, except for this, I got this free because the rewards points I got from Lukey because I ordered $220 in games. Which include Afterburner and Silphied. So... Yeah. So I got a Game Boy Color. The, the A button doesn't work as good as I want it to. I'm going to try to get that fixed. Albeit, I do have a 3DS that has the bumper buttons, the left and right buttons, not work anymore. Don't know why. DSi. Don't know where I put the DS Lite. Like, the only reason I got a DS Lite was so that I can move Poke get Pokemon from Generation 3 to 4, 5, and onward. However, because there's a paywall in Pokemon Bank to use it, I decided forget about it and just stop moving Pokemon. So, yeah, that is my collection in short. Well, I can't say in short because it took 15 freaking minutes. I mean, 17 almost 18. Oh yeah, Super Nintendo games and the Game Boy Color. I mean, Super Game Boy, which I also got for free. Oh yeah, and my lone Sega card, which you just plug in the Master System, you know, it was originally meant to be the low budget option of the Master System, but because of the space limitations, they kind of ditched it pretty early on. That's it.